It's Saturday now, this following weekend, Saturday the 29th of April, about 20 past 12. A wee bit late, what is it? Uh, 18 minutes past 12. Um, I haven't got started the fire, please yet. I'm right starting now, but I'll tell you what. I put masking tape on here, because I'm going to have to plaster this, and I have to paint this whole chimney breast again. So I thought, well, I'll put a bit of masking tape on. I can't believe how much that plaster's out. It's, uh, the plaster, whoever bought this fireplace, as crooked as anything, like real crooked. But that's, that's right very far. See, there's a thing, there's a plaster there. It's out a good half a centimetre beyond that masking tape. Uh, I've got something straight. So, I can't put the masking tape. I may just put the plaster over the masking tape and keep it as level as I can. Like, I'm not gonna, it's not going to get pure level because... If it's pure level, it's going to look shite if it doesn't match to the rest of the fireplace. Um, so I'll put the plaster on here. I got ready mixed bucket of plaster and screw fix. Get it as smooth as I can. Take off any dodgy stuff. I'll check without dodgy stuff. I just noticed here at the side too. Stick it out too far here. There, stick it out far too far right there. So I'll tape that off. I'll leave the tape on until the painting's finished. I'm looking at a new OLED TV, Sony, and uh, carries thousand pounds, thousand pounds everywhere, um, fifty-five inch. I couldn't believe how small the TVs were. Fifty-five inch is going to be slightly shorter than this fireplace. They got there's a forty inch, there, forty-two inch, and that looked big because when I bought that years ago, the big bezel, but they don't know bezels now, and they actually look a lot smaller. The boy says because the size of store, but I don't know. Uh, this is my experiment here. I put one of them candle bulbs in there. There's nothing holding this at the minute. So it's one of them bulbs. And um, with the dirt on the glass, it looks convincing. Brilliant at night time. I've set that away for a proper lamp holder at Amazon. It's another week before it comes. I don't know why it's taking so long. So I'll put that in to see if it takes one bulb, two bulbs, how many bulbs it takes. Um, I had an idea... I could put it as uh, glass beads and all around it. But as the dirt's on it, that looks more realistic. That's what it looks like in real life. But uh, in the meantime, I'm leaving the dirt on until I can think of something else. I get this black polished up again. I'm going to reuse that front there. It's a ton weight. Um, what I, I was on about putting spray foam behind here to make sure if you would have hit that a slap there now, say I would get my foot and kick that in and that... that Glue came away and hit the back of that, it would fall. If you had a wee cat or a dog there, it could get killed. By putting foam behind, no matter how much you bang that, it won't go on. So, no wee cat or dog lying there thinking that's a real fire is going to get injured. You have to think health and safety. But when I went to get the spray foam, I'd look on screw fix. They do spray foam that sticks as well. Had I known that, I could have already put that glue on there. I would try and scoop a wee bit of that out and make it look a bit better. So, you can see the small gap that's there now. These tiles, so I'm gonna try. I'll, I'll get the polyfiller, I'll polyfiller this, see how much is left of how much far it goes. I might put a bit of polyfiller behind that to hold this in place, but I intend to spray foam it. I'm gonna spray the foam right around that and seal the whole thing in. And the spray foam means I won't have to box in that cement either, either because it'll, it'll stick to this, uh, this bit of wall here. I'm going to draw a hole through the wall now. To run electricity to power whatever I'm going to power, and the whole idea of me building these boxes years ago is all the wires on there. Any wires you have from the videos, no videos now, like there was when I moved into the house, you can run all the wires up behind and through these white bits and under the TV. And um, it's the same with the lamps and all that. The wire this here now will go up and behind that box, that's where you keep all the cables. And the remote controls. See if you use smart sockets and stuff. It's handy to keep them inside that. I can put my hand in around the corner and get at them and reprogram them and stuff. So it's handy for that. But I'm going to modernize these boxes later on. So technology's moved on. Uh, I'm getting the beach worktop in my kitchen. And I'm using one worktop, £150 for a worktop, I've got 20% off. And uh, one of the worktops I'm using as a kickboard. So I'm cutting it about six inches slices, two six inches slices. So that leaves me then with half a work top left over, spare. So I'm going to change this wood here to the beach. So I have to wait until July, 
until I get um, the kitchen done and see what beach worktops left over. So I think by re that's never been painted in 13 years. By repainting that, putting the beach wood on, top and bottom, and putting in uh, more proper uh, different LED lights, I modernise them. Uh, I'll move the, the new TV is going to go lower down, so I have to move these wee buttons lower down to match. So I won't do, I won't really touch that until I get the TV in the kitchen done. If I get the new TV, I'll just stick it on, but I won't bother moving the things yet. So there's no point really painting this there, there is a see one one job affects another. So I'm going to see if I get this marble on now. Uh, I could try and cut this piece up. If it worked out, it'd be neat. It's dodgy. It's dodgy like. Because I don't want the marble so low down. I want it as high as I can. And I have the wee off cuts of marble. I've all the marble lying around here, these wee bits here. So by putting two wee bits at the bottom, that raises it up. And then the bit at the top can keep one piece. And then uh, I'll put one of them reinforcement bars. That's the idea. But first things first now. Uh, I'll clean up the surface right for polyfilm. I'll get this out. Get the I draw the hole. And... Once I draw the hole, I'll put a piece of plastic piping through there so I can feed the flex through any time I want without having to fumble because I won't get my hand on there once I get this bit of marble on. So I'm late in getting started, but I just get tired. Sometimes it's just nice to get something doing nothing. The good thing about an SDS draw, look at the size of these bits here you get. Can you imagine doing that there with a wee black and dark, right? And uh, still better off starting off with a smaller one and using a bigger one. You see that is no problem. That's no problem going through that chimney breast, breast there. The only problem you do have sometimes is well, I have room for the size of the machine and the butt. It mightn't be enough of room, so I might have to draw from this side. I dare you want to draw from that side so you don't bust the wall out. But by the time I put the butt into this here draw, Fall on there. Try to do things with one hand, like you see the length of that now. Brave length. Alexa, cancel. So there we are, what, what's happened there now is um, we've hit the pipe to begin with, there's a hollow behind, we've hit something else, it's hollow, and then we're out. So we're out just above the skirting board, and then uh, I can run the wire then, and behind this unit, and into a socket behind there. So I'll make this hole bigger now using this big bit, and then what I'll do then, because of all the cavities in there, I'll run a piece of uh, conduit, and then it's easy to pass flexes back and forward. That's the idea, anyway. It'd be handy if it went dead straight. The draw won't fill in dead straight. So, there's only way I could do it. Just for the sake of it, there's a bit of old conduit there now. And you see him poking out the wall there. I don't have to have it poking out the wall. But if it goes out to the very, very end, all the better. But I'm going to cut it at an angle. So I'm just going to guess now. But I can't cut that over there. So I'm going to cut this piece here now straight. Presuming that when I reverse this round, that'll be the angle I need for that wall over there. I don't know, I'll try to see. I'll cut it with a hacksaw. That cut there now. Now the whole idea of doing this is not because it needs done. It's not going to be seen. It is totally unnecessary. But... If you want to get experience at DIYing, you need to practice things. And you best practice on stuff like this that doesn't matter, rather than wait to get an important project where it does matter for angles and stuff. Now I'm reversing this round now, there's the angle then. How do we put the angle in? I'm now in this hole. And we fit it through. We'll just see if it is the right angle or not. No need for protractors and stuff like that, you know. Let's see how close we get. In this case, it's totally wrong, isn't it? It goes that way. There you see. 
So you see now how good that angle is there now. Though. Like there's no measurement or nothing there. That, it's hard to show with this phone. If we go sideways, it's 100% flush that wall. I'll take out a couple of millimetre back now behind the plaster. And then it's real neat. Look at that there. See? Now the touch screen phone knocked off of me there. So that, that's how you get the theory to work there. And now in here now, I'm just going to cut this short here. I'm going to cut that back there now. Like, so I'm just going to mark up with my hand there. That's not important. I'll keep that straight because you want your conjure straight for the next job. So I'll pull this out now. <laughs> I need to turn off this phone. Here's an old uh, power board now. Set that in there and I'll feed the flex through. Big long flex in this here, but I'll cut it down to the size, whatever I need. Uh, doesn't need to be such a big flex. But um, it's future proofing. Future proofing. See, later on, because I can open the door of this thing, I could maybe end up putting in uh, smart plugs and all in there to control all the stuff. You don't know what's going to happen. Because how much rain comes down that chimney, I have a block with cushions and stuff. I put my old chimney brush up to hold everything in place. Because... Um, you can't seal a, a chimney off 100% because moisture forms inside it. So I reckon with the cushions, it's breathable enough. But there shouldn't be any rain getting down. No rain has come down yet then, anyway. So I'll let that sit in there. Like so, so when I put on these slabs, now these slabs only come out as far as there, anyway. So they will. So you can always get them behind if need be. Let me flex this tacked up. A bit good job. Now I have to see now about what way I'm putting on this stone. I kept saying Mario on my other videos. I don't know what it is. The spray foam will be ideal. Sticky spray foam. But I've, I, don't, I don't know where the spray foam will uh, block up the tube after five minutes. How much time am I going to need to place these in place? Position these in place? I need more than five minutes. Because you've got to get the angles right here. Still has to be, the sides have to be square or the square frame is going to look daft with the sides going crooked. Um, maybe tell he's it might have been better, you know. It will give me more time. But this, I want I want it to be sort of permanently fixed. I'll try that uh, adhesive I have to begin with to sort of hold it. I'll cover a couple of squirts of that adhesive and the ceiling gun to hold it in place. And then once everything's in place, then I'll get the spray, the spray foam and spray it all around. This is much more difficult than I first thought. Um, I put a bit of masking tape to try and get things straight. If I put that at a slight angle, and that one's at a slight angle, the tires on the top are not going to meet in the middle. They're not going to be flat. Um, the fact that I have to use separate tires, three different tires to get the height up here, is making it difficult. There's a quite a bit of a gap behind that tire. But this tire at the side, there's not much gap. And this, it's going to be touching the breeze blocks. By the time I put the next tile here, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight, sort of. Uh, that's only one side, but then you, you see, even the bottom there where it's not level now, you can go crooked that way. There's so many different ways of going crooked. The tile mightn't be straight, I might have to go up and down the ways. There's so many different variants. And if it wasn't for the these tiles in the top meeting, you would get away with it if it was a wee bit crooked. Because these two in the top are meeting, won't look right. So I'm not going to use the spray foam. Because if you use the spray foam, I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to try and use this to stick like shit again. I'll still put some spray foam on the top when I'm finished. Bond everything together and stop that being kicked in. But uh, it's more complicated than you first think. Very easy putting the pieces on, you find it doesn't meet. So why I still kind of tweak it slightly? Maybe if I was to put the spirit level on there, is that even level? As a sudden? You see what I mean? So you made to put a wee, wee bit of gap underneath to get a level. There's so many things. So, because these are the waste bits of pipe, the waste bits of uh, granite I've had. So as that sits down there, it's not even level. I'm going to put a wee bit of paste under there to try and get it level. And then, as you go on up, it goes even more and more out. I've, I'm getting a wee metal strip from screw fix, you know, and that's two centimeters, two centimeters. So if there was a gap, you know, I want to get a perfect leg. 
But if there was a gap, that would hide it. Uh, so they be the tiles have to line up. If it means leaving a gap and getting the tiles lined up. So I'm not really tape this because it's going to be more thinking than anything else. I'm not really hard to form it. I'm doing this. Oh, just see how long it takes me. It's 1307 now. See how long it takes. So the first piece I put on, I put three big blobs of, of glue. I'm not spreading it out, big blobs. I guess right on the thicker the glue, the stronger it can get when it hardens. And a wee blob there to hold it steady. I've sort of got it squared going by that line. I'm using the masking tape now and the thickness of this to get it level. And this bottom one now needs glued on. I'll put one blob of glue there and then this big one goes on next. I'm going to see how we get it squared off. It's taking a while a lot of glue for that. That's the form might have been better. I've got two tubes of stuff. But this is what it is like. I'm not going to bother getting this 100% level. We'll let it go slightly crooked, but we have to go crooked. It's better to take the width on the on the base. As long as I get the next slab. If the next slab comes out with that level now, that wee brick might be too far out there, you know. We'll see how the next slab meets up. Uh, worst comes to worst, and get the angle grind and take a wee bit off the back, you know. Keep it where it is. I'll glue this on here now. And then we'll get the next slab to match on. If the next slab doesn't work, I'll get the angle grinder. I gotta take a, a wee bit of that off the angle grinder. Or a wee bit off the stone. Rather than move everything out. I don't want to move everything out. That's pretty neat as it is there. Don't want to have the whole thing too far out and never harden. So I'll glue this wee one on now. A one blob of glue do that. And then get this boy in. And even if that boy, if that one there, if I put a blob of glue in there now, and that sort of sits there, I might um, squirt the foam down. The foam seems to be a good stuff. It's not like the stuff I used to use. It's reusable. Uh, it activates with water. Even give the spools what loves with. So you, you can't wash it off things. If you spill a bit on something, you cannot wash it off with water. Water activates it. So because water activates it, um, you don't have to use the whole can. You can spray a bit and it won't harden in the can, it won't harden in the nozzle. It only hardens when it comes in contact with water. So you'd have to spray the wall with water first. Put a bit of spray of water, then put it in, spray your surface. Which could be quite difficult when using both. And then that activates, I said it activates quicker. So it will harden even without water after a long time. You can paint over it, plaster over it, sand it, you can do everything. Well, well ventilated room. I can't ventilate this room too well. So, if I don't use it in the fireplace, I, I've got the other gaps in the house before we made projects finished. I've extract the fan all to go on, the cook hood, all that to go on. Uh, pipes and all from the washing machine has to go on. So, it'll get used. So, next slab now. What on then, our problem? The idea of using these wee bits for the bottom, it looked well when I stacked them up. That's the bits off the side originally, and I can always put all the bits on the side. But because they were all factory aged and all the rest were handy, it's actually thinner marble than the rest. It's thinner. So that means now I'm going to have to cut the top. So I'm putting these false sheets in the bottom. And it means now I'm going to pull this one back off again. That's the advantage of that there. And I'm going to glue this. Because that's going to the bottom, I've, I've lined that up where it has to go now. and got it squared. Um, I'll glue that now from behind with this out of the way. It's actually easier this way. I just I want to avoid cutting. I want to avoid cutting that in case I went wrong. But, uh, so I'll take this back off again. Glue that, that's in position. It's lined up. Glue it from behind. Tack it. All it needs is three tacks. Put this back on. This time now I'm going to level it off properly going by that. Because I now know that's right. And then put the next piece on. So it'll actually be a better job. But, uh, I just having to cut this. Whether that's going to work out right, cutting it. So, I'll take this off now. That shouldn't be too hard yet. And I'll just squirt the glue. Put a couple of places behind there. You know what? You could even put a couple of wee bits of wood in there and wedge it. But the glue, you know, I might, I'll put the spray foam in there. I'm going to put the spray foam. I've got it now, all right? So, that's that's dead level, that piece. Can't get the spray level now. Can't get the spray level.
It's dead level. Dead square. I'm going to spray the foam in there. The foam's not going to move it. And then I paste this one back on again. I'm going to foam this one. And when I foam it, I'm putting the foam back as far as I can. So it's going to foam the fireplace too. That's what I got it for. So we can definitely foam them on there, squared up. And uh, I'll do the same with that. I'll glue this one on first. Make sure that's lined up. Put on the masking tape, like I did there. Then take this off and foam that side. Uh, the only thing is the one on the top. So you need... Um, I'm going to take a risk. What can I do? Like, what can I do? Foam, foam that flex. You know, you know what I'll do? I'll spray the foam and dry. And then it'll take longer to cure. It'll give, give me a wee bit of movement. That's what I reckon. So I'll read the instructions again. If I put it on dry, it's going to take longer to harden. It's not to say it won't harden. How long? Does it take months? Don't know. But if I spray the foam on dry, that'll hurt in place and allow me to give it a wee tweak if need be. I might have to give it a wee tweak. So now that's lined up, I'll get that on. Need to get that one on. Get the top piece. I don't have to cut it, just get lined up. Once it's lined up, then I'll glue on the side. sides. Oh god, this is complicated, this. Foam is a brilliant job. I'm able to squirt the foam from there back and leave it free at the front. And that allows me, that is still, you know, it's holding it, but it's, I can still move it slightly if need be. This top doesn't line up right. I could even get a piece of wood now lined up, you know. A wee piece of wood. Uh, that tell me if it's lined up. You need something long, and if there's any gaps, it's not lined up. I'll cut a wee piece of wood. I'll foam this one in. And uh, it's definitely a good job. It would work better if it, if it was wet. I can wet this side, make that side permanently fixed, because then I can end up with that. I'm going to get a wee piece of wood now, cut it from there to there, and that'll get them two lined up. And then uh, spray that one in. I'm going to wet that wall. That one can be permanent. But it's definitely a good job, the foam, as long as it doesn't harden down my nozzle. Well, this is what I've done so far now. I braced that across there to get them square. I would say it's a wee 1% out. If I, if I had a clamp on there, see if we get it dead on, can't get a clamp on, on in there. I've sprayed the foam, the full length down, each side. I put a wee bit of that, sticks like shit, just to, in case it goes quicker than the, than the foam, because I want to get these clamps off. Uh, them two stuck on, will stick like shit. Um, I need to get this clamps off, get the tap two in now. I can't stick the two together, I won't get it in place. I need to put one tile up, slide it too far back, put the other tile up, slide it too far back, slide them together, spray foam behind them. I need to put a wee metal brace and glue it on with a metal brace using that stick like shit. So we need to make sure the two tiles are joined together somehow. So I use a wee bit of the metal that came out of the reinforcement last week, out of this um, bottom half. And then the last two bits to glue on is them. Of them squared off, I put on wee pegs to level them off. So them's dead square. So it means the next one's now. See, there's that dry stuff there now. That's a wee bit of the foam has come out. And whatever you do, you don't use water on it. The foam came out here and I took it away with a chisel. But you see how it's gone on there. So that's the only disadvantage of the foam. Uh, you can't... Oh, I'm making, making it worse. That's why I used the old tile. You can't wash it off. Now, it doesn't even say to use method of spirits or nothing like that or turpentine. It just says don't get it on to begin with. In the instructions. But uh, that's that, that's right. So I have a wonder blind to fit now in my bedroom. I'm going to leave this, let that sit, and do the wonder blind. And then I'll come back to this. 1604 now. I'll put the blinds up in my bedroom. I've uh, put the plaster, no nonsense plaster screw fix, it's just like poi fella. Uh, it's actually a bit deeper there than it should be. Uh, so I had to underfold that and I gave it a second cut. Even the first cut's deeper than it should be. And, um, Leave it down the side. The thing is, uh, if you put on too much of a sand forever, like and dust everywhere again. So I'm looking at this bit of marble. These are off cuts to get across the top now. I had a um try and get the extra marble in here. I've had a ration out like. And there's the other two wee quarter bits that go on the top. Uh and I know there's a scratch in this. And that scratch is going to be in view. 
Uh, maybe behind the silver trim, actually. In fact, I'll make it so it's behind the silver trim. Um, sort of the way. That's the best cuts there. So you try and get the factory cuts, like try and get it neat. But uh, I measured there about, I think about seven. Seven high and a wee bit of marble just below that. But I'm looking at this here scratch now. To get that scratch out of the way, I want what I need to cut off. Seven would leave the scratch there. But say the wee bit of metal would hide it. If it was to take off eight, the scratch would be gone. But it's too fine, about too, the length will be short. See, that's fair. So I might try seven and a half. Because you don't know if that's level, that, that lot though, it's not, you can see it's not level. It's, it's crude like. So I could end up having seven and a half here, seven and a half here, and a bit of concrete showing, it'll be shite then. Don't know concrete showing. Seven and a half's cutting it pretty fine, you know. Um, if I measure from this beam up, seven would have been safer. But uh, it's because of scratch. Seven and a half. We'll get rid of the scratch. Um, I'm no good. Look at the wee tiny dots. I'll get mixed up with them. You do seven point three, like, and then up a death of seven point three. You got to think of the blade. There's a good chance that'll be away. So I'm going to put a bit of masking tape down here now. I'm drawing a masking tape, and the best of it is, I went to get a scraper. For the, the plaster. And what did I find in the box? Two rolls of masking tape. And there's me went and bought one. Like. So I couldn't get it last week. Could not get the masking tape last week. Two rolls of that stuff there. Unibon. Must have got it in that little. Brand new. That would have been handy for last week. I couldn't see to cut the marble. like. But uh, I use this white stuff now. I bought it. Even that's a brand new. I don't know where the box is. Got it on uh, Amazon. So I'll just put a roll of tape down here now. And I have to make sure that's in the middle whenever I go to cut the ends off. So I'm going to have to cut up and across. And uh, so I had to mark the two out together. So whenever they're put in place, hopefully they line up. Hopefully. So I'll get the masking tape on. So I'm getting the measurement now between these two slabs of uh, marble each side. And the important thing is here, it cannot be too long. Because it'll hold the metal trim out. If I'm going to get the measurement out slightly, it has to be too small, cut too big. Because I say the metal trim will, will hide it. If it's, if it's the other way around, it's going to knock the metal trim out and the rest. So if I'm looking there now, what number 58? So halfway between 57 and a half and 58. So if I mark 58 and cut the blade on the inside of that 58 line, that should be close enough. Uh, the reason why I'm going for an even number, because I have to get the middle of 58. So 58 divided by 2 is 25, so 6 to 7, 29. So if I mark out 29 now, each side, that'll be in the middle. So I'll mark that now. Yeah, I mark the wee dot, the wee mark, and then I put the, the tape on top and I'll draw the line proper then. I'll put the other bit of tape here now and draw the line proper. That there now. So if I was to measure up from that line now to that line, I should get 29. I'll be cutting this side of the line, so still will be 29. You know, it's, um, if I measure the other way, then you've taken a wee bit off. So I'm going to check that measurement once more, how far the 29 is. Because you know, if you're one or two millimeters over, that's only a millimeter each side. That's not, although I measure here, it appears like it's two millimeters out. By the time you Go in the middle, it's only one millimeter right. So I'll double check this measurement again, see if I get away with 29. Power now, so all I do now is cut this masking tape here. Take this outside now and get my saw from last week and cut cut out this out here. Uh, that stone was the hard stone to cut. Uh, it, was, it was melting. Probably do the same today. So I'll cut out to the garden.
kind of set man. Tell you the problem I've had here now. Um, because that was on the, the, the if I'm cutting along a line and the blade's on the far side of the waist, that's alright, I can see it. But if that's the opposite way around, that meant that the blade, it's hard to explain. If I had I cut the line, that'd been too small. So I had to use the guide to guide me. The line you see has disappeared. This one now I have to refrain because these bits of marble are different sizes and these bits of stone are different sizes. So it's not to say I can just replicate off the next one. Uh, it's pushing down in rain now. Rain's pushing down. I'm going to get a jug of water now and wash this again. The dust just cannot see the line with the dust. I have to do this one freehand. I just hope they line up. I have a funny feeling that may have to go a bit higher. I don't know. You, you can't take off a, a millimetre, I don't think. I had to flip the stone over to get the corner on. That last bit I have to do my chisel there. Because other than that, you had to take a cut the whole way up to get a sharp corner taken out. So I'll get a jug of water, clean that. This piece has been cut before, there's a wee bit of a weave to that. And if I was to use the guide, the guide would put a weave onto this. So I'm best doing freehand. But it's hard to, hard to tape it. I put the phone down there the last time, I don't know if I taped it or not. Not really high enough. So I'll go ahead and cut this. I'm putting water on as I'm cutting, I cannot see the line. I'm going to bring the hose pipe over. I cannot see the shit all over like. Uh, a wee word of warning. Electric and water don't go together. This saw is meant to have water. And it's got an RCD, oh, it's got an RCD and all on it. So it comes with its own RCD. Obviously you don't push the water in the motor. But, um, I'll just finish off these corners. Uh, it wasn't supposed to break off like that. Trim off the sweet corner. So I'll bring it on now, hope it matches up. Uh, if it's out of millimetre to the metal strip, I hate it. Didn't work out as well as I, I hoped. You can't see, what can you do? Like, it's pressing a rain out here now, and it's. Nature's uh, against me. The other marble hasn't hardened fully yet. I'm just going to wash this down now before I take it in a as well. I need to get that gap off there. What's the hand this way? I might just use a hammer and a normal chisel. Because that'll get in the way in the metal frame. Angle grinder would be the best thing. I got an angle grinder to it.